Welcome to the Scott Townsend Show, brought to you by Dietzo Man Productions. He was just killing those guys. And, yeah. Uh, kudos to them. I mean, they, they did a great job. They're good players. Mm-hmm. All don't don't get me wrong. It's just you know I felt like it was uh, he he really worked those guys out. Norman Johnson was on the Splash Club. I guess that's what they yep. called it. Or swim yep. team. And, uh, uh, Savage. Uh, uh, Chris Hayes. Chris Hayes. Yep. Yep. Uh, uh, Lauren Rolfing. Yeah, uh, Lauren Rolfing. Uh, you know, we we have quite a few swimmers. Uh, I remember all those guys kind of had not funny Tim hair, but not yet Tim Brenner. They all had kind of discolored hair because of all the chlorine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they like kind of green. Hey, this is Scott Townsend. Welcome back to the Scott Townsend Show. And today's another installment in the last of the Call High Wildcats 1982 series. Uh, College High, uh, or it was College High School, and we we call it Call High. College High School was a high school, one of two high schools in Bartlesville, Oklahoma. And that in 1982, when I graduated and the people who I am interviewing graduated, uh, that was the last year for that school. And then they combined the two high schools and and it's since then in 1983 it started uh, to be known as Bartlesville High School. So 40 years later, almost 40 years later, we just a few more months to go probably, um, we thought it would be fun to interview some of the graduating uh, class of 1982, the last graduating class of College High. So we've we've done Chris service. If, if you've been following along on this podcast and, and uh, you're familiar, with uh, some of uh, the, the school and the graduates. We've uh, had Chris Service and Stacy Dennis and Donnie Moreland. And today I have with me another good friend, old friend. When I say old, I mean just a long time. He's not old. I... Anyway, Glenn Goodrich, welcome to the show. Thank you. So what's going on, man? What have you been up to these days? Well, um, I live on the east side of Dallas, Texas, and um, work with computers for a living, uh, do IT for PNC Bank these days. Oh, okay. Um, uh, for those who know a little bit more, I generally work with big data. So IBM Watson, um, data analytics type things, projects. Uh, that's cool. So uh, bring us up to speed. That's what you're doing uh, over the last 40 years since we all graduated in 83, uh, 82, I'm sorry. Um, what are some of the highlights? What are some, you know, uh, just slightly skipping across the surface. Uh, what have you been up to for the last 40 years? So I went to Oklahoma State University with you and um, several others. Um, after college, I went to work with and doing computers uh, primarily. Um, For a number of years, I bounced around and lived in the Oklahoma City area. Um, I had a small ranch there. I had uh, 80 acres, cow calf, the whole thing. Hmm. About 10 years ago, decided that maybe uh, there was a different plan for my life than where I was at. And um, Decided at that point to kind of, I'll say for lack of a better term, blow my life up, start over, (laughs) Um, sold everything, moved to Texas without really even a secure job. And um, what was that like? It was a little scary. Um, IT is can be a little bit of a nomadic existence. At times, um, having been a developer for many, many years, it, it's kind of a, the nature of the beast, mm-hmm. uh, especially with our generation. I liked uh, the way Chris Service said it. Sometimes things don't turn out like you plan. Right. But uh, since I've been to Dallas, things have rolled consistently. That's good. What, uh, what made you blow it up? What made you decide to blow everything up? Well, um, so I had always, from the time we were very young, wanted to live on a ranch and work with computers. And what I found in Oklahoma was after about 2004, 2005, that the economy in Oklahoma didn't really support 
a guy like me, there were very few jobs available for at the pay scale that I was looking for. Mm. Um, so I had to make a decision about how I wanted to spend, shall we say, the rest of my life. My kids were not interested in my ranch. They weren't interested in being living in the country. They wanted no part of it. I looked around and said, you know, okay, maybe I need to change what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. uh, things were not easy at that point. Things were uh, rather difficult. I um, was making trips to Dallas on a regular basis at that point and decided uh, on a particular trip to come out and see this little town called Rockwall, Texas. Mm. Uh, for the Bartlesville graduates here, I would recommend highly coming down to Rockwall. It is a lot like Bartlesville, except for, I call it Bartlesville South. Huh. Um, similar size, similar uh, makeup around the town of people. You know, the mix of people is similar to Bartlesville. My neighborhood kind of looks like Woodland Park. A little bit mm -hmm. um i really like it and uh, it was odd uh, came down on labor day found something we liked sold everything and was moved here by thanksgiving oh wow and it was just one thing after another um i got uh, i got uh you know everything sold i didn't like have to lose my shirt to do it and uh, walked right into a beautiful home in, in Texas and um, found work fairly quickly. Um, I've been blessed. I mean, I've, I've spent the last 10 years at um, Southwest American Airlines working as consultant, PNC Bank, and now as a true employee of PNC Bank. So maybe I should blow everything up, try some. <laughs> Hey, you, you know, and you don't have any state income tax, so that's even That's better. right. If you are doing, you know, if you're where you're supposed to be, things get really easy. And that's kind of my, my thing about all this is, you know, it's, if you're doing the right thing, things can get very easy. So looking back in the, uh, going back in the time machine here. So thinking back on college high, uh, call high wildcats. What's, uh, what's the first thing? What's your fondest memory? What, what's uh, one of the fun memories of college high you've got or one of the best? So uh, unlike a lot of people, you know, I left for a period of time during our junior year and came back for our senior year. I didn't know that. And, yeah. Um, I left in the middle of uh, football season, the night after the call high center game in 81 hmm. left town and came back for our senior year. Um, I was blessed to be able to live with Mark Thompson and his family. Oh yeah. Our senior year. Um, that whole year I really cherish because hmm. I got to spend it with the people I grew up with. Um, everybody from the limestone kids to, mm -hmm. you know, all the others, that have gone to school with in junior high and high school. Who were some of the limestone kids, Keith and. Oh, you know, there's Jansen. really, we're a pretty uh, tight Art. group. Uh, so you know, uh, Jansen was not a limestone kid. Oh uh, yeah. No, but Stark was uh, Chris, um, Laura Ayers, Robin. Uh, uh, I was trying to think of for sure. All the ones uh, you, you, we get mixed up with the wayside kids a little bit. Oh yeah. But uh Randy Savage, oh yeah, Lauren Johnson, um Kathy not Lauren, Williams. Not Lauren Green. No, nope, not Lauren Green. Um uh Kathy Williams, uh Lori Eastman. Mm -hmm. Um uh I can go on and on and on, yeah. honestly. You know, Keith yeah. and several others. I work a little bit at trying to remember names. Um I get a little nervous about uh memory loss so that's something <laughs> that i do <laughs> uh, this is a uh, working with a rubik's cube i taught myself oh. how to fix it or solve it and and do it so that i'm just like that you know i don't want to <clears throat> want to keep the synapses yep. sparking you know i so. i worry about that from time to time yeah so what did you go to prom i really didn't 
Um, okay. Our senior year, I went to the First Baptist Morp, they called it, uh, with a good friend from Sooner. Oh, okay. And uh, her name was Linda Tatro. And I went. Linda Tatro. And several people know Linda. She lives there in Bartlesville now. So I think the, she's uh, a teacher. The uh, First Baptist Church, I went there. You were there, your parents. Um, yep. Those were, those were good times. Dr. Cook and, you know. Oh, it was, it was always, uh, it, it was a nice group. It was a good, we had a large group, so it, it was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. um, got to take some interesting trips as a group and uh, hang out. So, What kind of grades did you make in high school? Oh, man. I, you know, I, I was a, I was a solid uh, C plus student, you know, B minus. <laughs> I mean, um, better than I, me. And I say that because I laugh. I mean, here we are, we had 296 in our graduating class. And we had six national merit scholarship finalists. Uh, I feel like, I mean, we went to school with some really smart people. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you've got your John Sayers, you've got Sandra Yeager, yeah, John got, Sayer. you know, um, uh, you know, there's several others that kind of might, you know, Laura Ayers was another one. She was a really top uh, student. Um, and, and I don't think was she? Trisha was very bright. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I, there's just a ton of them. Yeah. When you start really looking at it, I felt like they probably had a hard time figuring out a valedictorian because mm -hmm. they had so many with good grades. So, um, but I feel like also that prepared us and gave us a better, I look back on that now. And when I had kids that went through public education, I, I was like, wow, I didn't realize what a great school system we really went through mm -hmm. and how much better of an education we got until uh, the first real eye-opening experience was when I went to New Mexico for half of my junior year. And uh, that was a little bit interesting because I was able to coast because I had done so much in Bartlesville that I was so far ahead. The, the, last, um, the last experiment I did in chemistry in Albuquerque was the first experiment that we did at call high at the beginning of my junior year. So I'd already <laughs> done the experiment once that year. Right. So they started at call high where most public schools finished. And so we really did get a great education because of that. Mm -hmm. It was a great education. I didn't appreciate it at the time, but uh, looking back on it now, I wish I would have applied myself just a little bit more. If you, I always yep. tell everybody I'm the third of the class that made the top two thirds possible, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've got it right there with you. Uh, who was your most impactful teacher? What, uh, what oh, teacher? Uh, um, probably Mr. McKinney, the art teacher. Um, McKinney? You know, I heard, yeah. McKinney. Uh, there's a lot about McKinney that I don't know what people knew or didn't know. So McKinney was an all state football player at call high in the late fifties and 57, I think was his high school year. Oh yeah. He, um, when we were in school, if people will remember in the white room, they had a picture of all the all staters from college high and his picture was up there and he played for university of Kansas in college and was hurt during a game, hurt his neck, had a neck injury. And that's why he was on track to become a professional uh, artist and um, graphic designer. Because of his injury, he could not work a 40 hour week. And so he came home to teach. And um, for a number of years, he was actually the JV football coach in the, I'll say late 60s, early 70s timeframe. And he was known because he would line the boys up. Is that him? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, yes. I can get my camera to yep. focus. Um, he would line the boys up and if they could beat him at a 40 yard dash, they didn't have to run any more sprints that day. Huh. <laughs> and the story always was he never lost. Wow. But, um, but by the time we got to call high, of course, he quit coaching and was just teaching. And, um, he was hilarious. He would tell stories, um, did a lot of the, uh, Benny Hill limericks and routines under his breath <laughs> quietly. <laughs> 
Um, but he was he was a character. He was fun. Uh, I think Stacy mentioned him too. Yeah, I think as you interview the class, I think several people will mention him. Yeah. So. Sue Reynolds was another one that seems to be popular. Sue Reynolds was a good friend of my parents and a very nice lady, as was Dennis Pinnell. Um, mm -hmm. You know, part of the reason why I got to come back and go to Call Hire senior year was that Pinnell was the principal. Oh, really? Uh -huh. um, it didn't hurt that Mrs. Bowen, uh, Butch's mom, worked in the office. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, there were several factors that played into me being able to come back. In fact, Dennis Pinnell um, went to Oklahoma City with my dad and I. See, a lot of people don't know, I was not allowed to play football our senior year. Uh, state board uh, of coaches did not allow me to play because I didn't love my parents. Hmm. And Pinnell went with my dad and I to Oklahoma City to talk to the state board. So, well, I'll be. so that and so that turned out they upheld their decision. They upheld their decision, and um, therefore I didn't play football our senior year. Wow, I did not know that either. I, that that Pinnell and got involved with your yep. athletic career there. Yep, I reached out to Dennis Pinnell on Facebook, uh, and we connected. I'd like to get him on the show and talk to him about you know his uh, experiences i think that'd be good i think he had some very funny things i would love to hear him speak about uh the music over the intercom incidents um <laughs> donnie I mentioned that i won't name names but yeah um yeah it would be interesting to get his take on it after all these years I have a hard time remembering a lot about high school i don't know if i was it's a selective mem I was, I was pretty checked out, I guess. I don't know. I, I remember the hallways. I remember the lockers. I don't remember a lot of it. Mr. Burt, Coach Burt. Yep. I know Coach Bruno. Burt, yep. um, I had Bruno. Coach Seaborn as a oh, teacher. Oh, did you? He was very tough, very smart. We would do things to him in the, as a class just to get under his skin once in a while. And he would, I remember one day he threatened to take us all out to the track and make us run laps. Uh, <laughs> we were going to run go devils i'm going to run you guys till you can't walk it was a class full of guys though there wasn't a whole lot of girls it was a physics class but there was mostly all guys um bruno pulled me uh coach bruno pulled me aside i think it was my freshman or junior year and i was super tall i mean i was right. like i was all oh, yeah. I, was, I was already six four when i was whatever yep. anyway so he said, hey, can I uh, see you after class, after, after school? And uh, I said, sure. So I went to the gym and he had a basketball. And he says, so let's see what you can do with this basketball. I, he had an idea that maybe he's going to get this really tall, lanky kid to get on the basketball team. So I took the basketball. And I just started trying to do stuff with it. And about five minutes later, Bruno goes, here, just, just give me the basketball back. Well, <laughs> We won't tell anybody. Well, I was this. always I was always really impressed with the guys that played basketball in high school because I felt like they worked harder in workout, and mm -hmm. uh, probably the only guys that worked as hard as they did or close to as hard as they did maybe the swimmers. Mm -hmm. I mean, not the football players didn't do our part to get in shape, mm -hmm. but I felt like uh, they ran hard. Bruno ran hard. Uh, I always felt like uh, it was a tough. That's part of why I never tried to play basketball in high school because it looked like to me he was just killing those guys. And uh, yeah, uh, kudos to them. I mean, they, they did a great job. Good players. Mm -hmm. All don't don't get me wrong. It's just you know I felt like it was uh, he he really worked those guys out. Roman Johnson was on the Splash Club. I guess that's what they yep. called it, or swim team, yep. and uh, uh, Savage. Uh, uh, Chris Hayes. Chris Hayes. Yeah. Yep. yep. Uh, uh, Lauren Rolfing. Yeah. Uh, Lauren Rolfing. Uh, you know, we, we had quite a few swimmers. Uh, I remember all those guys kind of had not funny Tim hair, but not yet. Tim Brenner. They all had kind of discolored hair because of all the chlorine. Chlorine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they all had kind of green, yellowy hair or whatever. Thank you for joining the Scott Townsend Show. We'll be back right after this.
Pops Daylight Donuts, man, they've got the best tasting donuts, sausage wraps, pastries in Northeast Oklahoma. And also, if you'll tell the staff there, hey, Scott Townsend said to give me a large spicy pig, they'll give you a free large spicy sausage wrap. But you have to tell them Scott Townsend sent you. So tell them, hey, Scott Townsend told me to tell you to give me a large spicy pig. So there's the offer. There's the, there's the call to action. So go to Pops Daylight Donuts. Say hi to Mark for me. And uh, yeah, go to Pops Daylight Donuts and get you some. The other sponsor is Castafly Outdoor Adventures. Adventure. That's where it begins. We look to create and document our moments in time while embracing the majestic wonder and beauty of the great outdoors. Our quest is is to explore the back roads of the Ozarks, camping, fishing, and just getting lost. Refresh your spirit and join us on our next adventure. Paul and his crew invite you to subscribe to the Castafly Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. I don't know, but anyway. For me, though, uh, the other part of high school I remember is because I've always been a car guy. And so mm. I can remember pulling up in front of the school our senior year, especially uh, I would park my car in a certain spot. Um, Stark would pull his car in a certain spot. Chris Harris or Jeff Harris would show up and put his uh, car in a certain spot. Um, I had a Mustang. What year? Um, oh, I have pictures. If you want a picture of it, my senior year, I had a, I had a 70 Mustang coupe and I drove oh, that cool. car through college till after I got married and got rid of it. In fact, I, um, I kind of know where it is at the moment. I've, I've run it down a little bit. Huh. Um, Stark had a Tweety Bird yellow and black must 71 Mustang. And um, hmm. I actually have a picture of it too, somewhere. Um, I remember Jeff Harris had a really nice uh, Firebird with a big block motor in it. It was a nice car. Um, there were several others that had nice cars. The one that used to crack me up the most was Margaret Tinkle because she'd drive her dad's Pantera about half the time. And uh, I'm like, there's the fastest car in the parking lot right there. You know? um, but, uh, I do I remember that. I almost remember that Pantera. Yeah, it was a beautiful car and very well put together. Uh, some of those Panteras aren't as well put together as that one was. That one was a gorgeous car yeah and um uh, you know it wouldn't I compare to it my was... uh it wouldn't compare to what i drove it was the kingwood estate station wagon i mean that was one hot <laughs> that was one cool ride right there yeah there the you go radio inside yeah yep i was trying to remember there was one of the guys that was into dodges and had a really nice uh dodge and i, I cannot for the life of me remember his name off the top of my head and he ran around with Jerry Green, but I would have to go look up his picture. Oh, yeah. Find him. He was a very quiet guy. Never know. But he had a very nice ride. He had he had done the work, and it was a very nice hot rod. And uh, What was it about the Mustang? Well, why did you choose a Mustang? I'd always wanted one since I was a kid. My first car was a 69 Fastback Mustang, and I, I unfortunately wrecked it and um, fixed it and sold it to charlie penley and, oh yeah uh, the penleys drove it there for a while and i think they sold it to eric cunningham who was in a lower class but after that i lost track of it hmm. i guess i wasn't aware of that either i wasn't aware of much of anything in high school <laughs> <I don't think>. <laughs> <laughs> oh just getting through the days man those were good times yeah um what was the most, uh, I don't know, what's the craziest, uh, what's the most trouble you got into in high school oh, in high or school. the senior year, if you did? I don't remember so you our, getting our in trouble. Senior, so our senior year, I had to do something where I ended up, there is a vault at Call High behind in where the secretaries are and where the, the assistant principal's office is. Oh, yeah? And I was for some reason ended up in that vault area and there was a huge banner in there that said seniors of 67 say beat sooner and i absconded with that thing and we we went 
and we it was made out of a sheet or sheets that were tied together mm. and we took the 67 part and covered it up with a sign that said 82 who's we uh, me and stark did this okay. I'll, I'll name names and so we <laughs> put it up we went up on top of the we broke into the school at night and we were going to hang it off the top of the school and then they canceled school the next day. It was the day of the call high sooner basketball game because they didn't let us play football that year. It was the basketball right. game. And it right. snowed. It was a snow day. We didn't have school that day. So we had to break back into the school and get the thing off the roof before anybody <laughs> saw us. Right. And then we took it to the basketball game and Stark snuck it in under his coat. And we spread it out. And in the senior yearbook, there's a picture of that somewhere. I, I, I think it's in the senior yearbook or the addendum that came out after the senior yearbook, but it's at the call high center basketball game. And there's hmm. a sign, there's a, a whole group of a row of people holding up the sign. Oh yeah. Um, I have to look that up and see what's going on. That was probably the, the deepest I got into it. I knew about and was around several of the other things, including the pigs, but I wasn't necessarily the one The you know, I just knew about them. Right. Uh, there was the car in the lobby and car in the lobby. Um, you know, I, I knew all the details, but so why didn't they let us play the last game in the football game? It was it because well, there was such a rivalry. They just didn't want. Exactly. You know. It had gotten out of hand. That was a big reason why they recombined the high schools. There was, there was really a couple of different reasons it was beginning to emerge in the late 70s I, and i'll go back to the class of say 78 79 the rivalry had gotten white hot in town and people were egging houses cars and just all over town and it had gotten really a, almost a little dangerous right in through that time period there was a burning is, of this uh for those of you listening or watching that don't know what we're talking about so college high and so college high was on the south west kind of side of town sooner was on the northeast side of town sooner uh and they were the spartans spartans and we call them the green weenies and i don't know what they called us but uh so back and forth started off you know the rivalry as always starts off good humored good natured and whatever but it kind of escalated as glenn is saying over the years to the point where uh it was almost a war <laughs> 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 i mean by the time we were in oh, we would have been freshmen it was insane so it was the burning there was a burning of the spartan where they would build a spartan every year yeah yeah big would, pep rally yeah and um but the other thing that happened right in through there uh, in the midst of all that it began to kind of the schools also the enrollment had gone down yeah and it if you looked at the football teams that were on the field, I'll say from 1980 on, Sooner had developed into, they had a number of really good running backs that were coming through uh, the Sooner side of town. Ricky Cipolla, who graduated in 81 from Sooner, was a, was a great example of that. And there were several others that mm -hmm. I don't know the guys per se off the top of my head. I knew Ricky. And, um, but, and then Call High had emerged as more of uh, we had a lot of linemen. We had a bunch of big, tall kids, big, heavy set kids. Um, you know, uh, Daryl Williams, uh, you know, um, uh, is it Williams? Dur yeah, um, there was, uh, was Dennison. You know, Dennison was a good running back yeah. and, you know, but he was not, um, and uh, you know james was a, a good guy we just didn't quite have the caliber that were definitely going to college now now did james did get some reviews from uh the colleges but you know the average kid at at call high the the of the t of the town i think they felt like if they could merge the two teams together and they did they merged the two teams and won state championships through the mid 80s mm -hmm. and, and that was the whole a part of a part of the co combination of the schools i think mm -hmm. i think they felt like they could dominate athletics in oklahoma by doing that what well and that incentive the schools were losing money too because with the dwindling population for each high school they were able they were unable to collect as much money from the state i think that's the way it went right 
So by combining into one high school, um, they got more money because they were a, a 6A school at that point. So they got more, I guess, money out of the programs is also. That would be a great topic to cover with Pinnell mm-hmm. because he was right in the middle of that. So you're, uh, I ask everybody this, so I ask you. So if you're uh, standing there at the graduation and uh, you're, uh, Glenn, 18-year-old Glenn Goodrich is stepping off the stage after he's received his diploma and shaking Pinnell's hand. Uh, what, would, Knowing what you know now, what would you tell your younger self? So from my perspective, um, I would tell myself to slow down. Don't be in such a hurry to be an adult. And don't really uh, savor the time, I think, in your 20s a little more. Be willing to be on your own a little more than what I was. Why are we in such a hurry to speed through that 20 to 30? You know, I, I'm a little bit like Chris Service. I, I left high school with an idea and a plan. And, uh, you know, there was something different in store for me. And yeah. I think that some of it would have worked out um, had some things gone differently in life. But, you know, Uh, what's meant to be is meant to be and sometimes you just have to uh, experience it Mm -hmm. yeah i uh i was on the right track for right after high after high school went to ku you know uh film film production uh major and then from there i went to osu journalism and the only thing i remember a professor saying at OSU was. And by the way, uh, representatives from Disney are going to be here next week uh, to interview those that, of you that might want to, you know, do an internship there. And I was like, wow, that's really cool. So I went into the interview and uh, I, I, I had always, that's ever since I was a little kid, I always said, you know, one of, the, one of these days I want to work for the Disney company. And so here, here I am, I'm knocking on that door and it, and it opened and I went and then after graduating Oklahoma State went back uh, got into guest relations at Epcot <clears throat> was on the not the fast track but it was a faster track than most and then I just tossed it all away just, just threw it away couldn't I... yeah I get it it's you know sometimes you do things and you think that's going to be the dream and that's exactly what you're looking for in life and it becomes a struggle it becomes a hardship and you realize well you know this works to a point but it's not exactly i'm not happy and i'm not going to be happy and um while i did some things that made me very happy at the time i'm much in a much better place at this point Mm. um and I think it's just a matter of being where you're supposed to be and doing what you're supposed to do. And no matter what you do, no matter what kind of uh, failures or uh, uh, things that you go through, it, it, you know, if I hadn't wound up back in Tulsa, I would not have met my wife. And, you know, I've got a super yep. fantastic wife and a great son, 27. He's married. You know, life, life is good in that way. So it makes you appreciate what you've got. It does. And, and when you're in the right place, it's funny how it all just kind of clicks. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yep. What's been your greatest accomplishment since graduating? Wow. Um, geez, I don't know. I've done a lot of different crazy things. Um, I've, I've had some great joys and uh, some odd sorrows. Um, I don't know. That, 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 I'd have a hard time putting, narrowing it down to more than about three or four. I mean, uh, I think that people, uh, it's wonderful that through this medium, we're able to reach out and connect with people and friends. Um, I, I think it's amazing how well we've been able to connect as a class. Um, some of the longest and best friendships I've ever had are, you know, out of Bartlesville mm-hmm. and, um, through the last 
10, 15 years with the internet and all of the hoopla about it. The fact is, it's been a great way to reconnect with people that I truly appreciate and um, feel blessed to know. Mm-hmm. Like I said, some of the smartest people I know are you know people I've grown up with, and mm-hmm. uh, uh, and I've had you know more good times with uh, these people, and I look forward to having more. Um, I think it's uh, fun for us to be able to get together as a group. Um, I enjoy seeing everybody. Uh, a lot of which, as we get older, seems more and more like I call them family. Um, a lot of the limestone kids I feel that way about, um, mm-hmm. you know, they're just, they're almost like a kin. It seems mm-hmm. like I've known them that long. So, yeah. Last question. Uh, finish this sentence. I wonder whatever happened to. Oh gosh. Uh, Richard Whitmar would be my, would be my person. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. Rich uh, or um, Richard. Uh, I have no idea what happened to Richard. I, I've never really kind of run him down. I think his brother's on, Ron's on Facebook, but uh, I've never run Richard down. Hmm. Uh, I know quite a bit about where several people are, but he's one that I've never heard anybody say anything about hmm. or seen anything about. So so if you're listening out there, you're watching and you know Richard Whitmire and you want to get in touch with us and let us know what he's doing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Leave a comment, uh, send an email, uh, let us know. But, uh, well, that's cool. Um, you know, you're, 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 you, you look just like your dad. I was telling <laughs> Ben the other day, my brother, that I was going to be talking to you. And Ben was like, you know, he looks just like his dad. I was like, I know. He looks just like him. All the good riches look the same. Um, I have a bunch of cousins that live in the Catoosa area over around Owasso and Catoosa. Uh, when I'm with them, everybody assumes I'm a, their last name is Keeter, and I, I'm assumed to be part of their tribe. I'm like, no, no, they're part of the Goodrich because we all look the same. <laughs> and, uh, That's um, cool. Yeah. Well, um, any last words? Any, any parting comments? Before we? No, I I truly appreciate you letting me do this. I think it's a blast, and uh, I think it's a great thing that you're doing. Uh, I enjoy your podcast very much all of them uh, I've, I've listened to quite a few of them um I, you have uh, a very uh, great great uh, base there going so it's it's a lot of fun that's cool well i appreciate that well all right glenn um i'm gonna wrap it up here so if you you know as always if you like this show share it subscribe like uh on youtube and on pod in the podcast you can find us on itunes or wherever you get your podcasts especially if you're a call high wildcat um uh, make yourself available to these uh, this mini series and there will be more as we go glenn who do you think should be the next uh, person i need to do a boy girl boy girl thing. i'd like to see you get i'd like to see you go get uh, uh i mean there's several people available i think you could get fairly easily i think um uh, you could probably go get Laura Ayers. You could probably go get Amy Wallen fairly easily. Um, they're both online quite a bit. Amy Robin Hot, yeah. Um, Robin Hottenstein kind of retired uh, off to the Carolinas, I believe, with oh, her yeah. husband. And they, you know, I think she has a lot of people that um, she has a lot of friends online. I know that would probably love to hear from her. Um, not just the call high kids, but yeah. a lot of people in general. Um, I think it would be interesting to hear from Sandy Yeager. Um, mm-hmm. and, uh, she is back east. And, uh, One of the super smart a, kids. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I think uh, Christy Brooks would be an interesting conversation. Uh, yeah. Christy travels a lot, but if you could catch Christy in town. Mm-hmm. I think you had mentioned you were going to try to get Rhonda and uh let me get Rhonda. you know they're 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 uh i guess they're trying to plan a reunion <clears throat> somebody is i guess it's Rhonda yep. and some crew so this might be a good way for them to disseminate information about uh you know upcoming events and what, how it's progressing the planning's progressing and things like that so uh yeah might have Rhonda on not only to talk about her uh year or 
her last year there, but uh, also talk about uh, reunion plans and things like that. Well, yeah. All right, man. Know, I appreciate you doing it. Like I said, it's a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, uh, you know me, I can talk, so. I'm, <laughs> Don't have any problem with that. I'm like, That's I'm good. like, I, I, I can visit, so, yeah. <laughs> so, if you get bored and just need somebody, call yeah. around. All right, Glenn. Appreciate it. Uh, thank you very much. Appreciate it. And I uh, hope, hope you have a good rest of your day. So for Glenn Goodrich, this is Scott Townsend. Thanks for joining the Scott Townsend Show. Have a great day, and we'll talk to you later. The Scott Townsend Show is a Dietzo Man production. For more episodes, visit the Scott Townsend Show YouTube channel, listen on Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows.